What up YouTube, it's your boy Double M and I'm coming back at you with another tutorial. This isn't your basic Double M tutorial, nah, this isn't a normal tutorial that you will see on this channel. I'm kicking things up a notch, so I need your focus. Hey, stop what you're doing. I need your focus. If you have not watched my previous tutorial, make sure to give it a watch. It's like a guide to learning the anatomy, you know, if you're still new to this. But if you think you're the hot stuff, Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm taking you through the anatomy of the neck. Before we go through any anatomy, we can't do any anatomy without the base. Now that's where the skeleton comes in. What's good? Now starting with the muscle and the individual muscles that connect from this place to that place on the skeleton as a base can be difficult as an artist when you're starting to learn anatomy for the first time or for the first few times. So before you start with any muscle, you have to start with like a shape. I explained this properly in my previous tutorial, which you should make sure to watch if you have not, but I'm going to explain it a bit more in this tutorial. So it's not going to be that if you don't watch the previous tutorial, you won't know what's happening here. The previous tutorial just helps. So these are just basic 3D shapes that you can use to symbolize these body parts for the neck we will have a cylinder and we will have some sort of triangle now the cylinder yeah we can all understand the cylinder that's the neck it's, it's obvious it's quite obvious but for the triangle that sort of symbolizes that's sort of to illustrate the muscle that's actually on our backs that can be seen uh, from the front the reason why I have this is because it really contributes to the tutorial and how to draw this neck because even you can tell this muscle exists looking at anyone at a front uh, view you follow the profile of the neck you're going down following the neck and going at an angle from the neck to the top of the shoulder it's not perfectly straight it's never perfectly straight now that's just painful oh i'm hurt oh my neck now looking at the actual anatomy looking at the muscles all of the muscles of the neck it also gave me a headache but with a lot of observations in real life and with a lot of anatomical practices i realized that there are only a few muscles in fact there are only two muscles that we need to focus on when it comes to the anatomy of a neck because most of the time it's just these two muscles that are shown the first one we have the sternocle eh! uh, the sternocleidomastoid the sternocleidomastoid is attached to the back of the skull just behind the bottom of the ear to just in front of the collarbone now, the interesting thing the interesting part about this muscle is coming down from the back of the skull it's a singular muscle but somewhere around the halfway point it divides into two heads now the first head you can see prominently it's connected just in front of the collarbone the second head is actually connected to the collarbone that primary sternocleidomastoid is a lot narrower as it goes down from the back of the head but the secondary one is a lot wider as you can see now the second muscle is the trapezius muscle now the trapezius muscle is the muscle that is actually on the back that you can see from the front the reason why we're having it in this tutorial is the first reason we can see it from the front or from the side view when we are talking about the neck and it actually forms the back wall of the neck and the top of the back when we do a tutorial on the anatomy of the back you're gonna see this muscle again so again a few reasons as to why we're focusing on these muscles when it comes to the anatomy of the neck first reason when you look at the neck or when you look at people around you not that you're only focusing on their necks these are the muscles that are more prominent these are the muscles that are first to be seen all the time compared to those little other smaller muscles that hardly ever show up in the first place and although the smaller muscles still contribute to the movement of the neck the muscles we are talking about and looking at do most of the contraction and the flexion do most of the work the little smaller muscles they just help out they just make Make this job easier which is the second reason why we're only looking at these muscles so now that we have highlighted these muscles now that we have looked at these muscles let's jump back to our cylinder and our triangle trying to draw them in different views now the front view for the sternocleidomastoid 
it connects from the back of the skull just behind the bottom of the ear to that part that's just in front of the collarbone. Drawing this in the front view, it looks like the sternocleidomastoid is coming from the bottom of our jaw. Remember for the sternocleidomastoid, the primary head, it's wide, it's sort of thicker coming from the back of the head and as it goes down to in front of the collarbone, it gets thinner in profile. Now the second head of the sternocleidomastoid is much wider and comes sort of halfway from the first head of the sternocleidomastoid. It's a lot wider, it actually connects to the collarbone and it leaves like a little gap in between the two connections near the collarbone. In this case, our collarbone is that bottom of the triangle. Now, for the trapezius muscle, most of the time you can just classify that whole triangle as a trapezius muscle because it's basically what it is. But to be more defined, if you want to show more definition of the trapezius muscles, this is how it actually looks. The reason why I have it highlighted like this, because that gap there, those are those uh, smaller neck muscles that we didn't really classify, that we don't really need to memorize, that show themselves when, for example, someone is really angry, really shouting, or really, really, or really flexing their neck really hard. But the only reason they are actually seen from the front view is because of that trapezius muscle at the back so most of the time when the character is relaxed when the person is just merely turning one direction or merely just looking forward that triangle can be classified for the trapezius muscle you don't have to put that much definition for the trapezius muscle just have the triangle there for the trapezius muscle jumping to the third coat of view again we have our sternocleidomastoid from that part of the skull behind the bottom of the ear to the part of the body that's just in front of that collarbone it gets it's a thick muscle and as it gets slowly to the part in front of the collarbone it gets thinner and thinner and thinner now the second head remember wider comes somewhere from the halfway point of the first sternocleidomastoid is connected to the actual collarbone or in this case the bottom of that triangle and leaves a gap between the two connections of the two heads and then you have that trapezius muscle again most of the time i just leave that triangle there to show that that's the trapezius muscles being seen from the front but in order to highlight it and to show where it actually is there you go one more time seeing these muscles now from the side view Again, the sternocleidomastoid, back of the skull, behind the bottom of the ear, to that part that's just in front of the collarbone, with the second head of the sternocleidomastoid, a lot wider, somewhere from the halfway point of the first sternocleidomastoid, to the bottom of the triangle, or connected to the collarbone, and leaves that gap in between the two connections. And we have the trapezius. Now here you can really see how the trapezius serves as the back wall. Of, a, of the neck. Now you know the actual muscles to focus on, the actual muscles to put emphasis on when drawing the neck, the actual muscles to keep in mind when drawing the neck. Now let me show you how to actually draw these muscles because you're not gonna draw these muscles individually every time you draw the neck. You're gonna make your characters look really buff or really weird. So let me show you how to draw these characters. But before we do all of that, if you are enjoying the video so far, make sure to drop that like. And if you have not, make sure to hit the subscribe button to join the Double Empire, to become part of the Double Empire so you can get more of these tutorials and more of these art videos that I post on this channel. All right, all right, now let's, con let's continue. Now, before we go anywhere or do anything, we need to understand that they are males and females and we all have our differences. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on the anatomical differences. I did a more generalized difference analyzation between the male and the female anatomy in two videos, actually. Make sure to go watch them if you have not. But for now, I want to focus primarily on the neck and the neck profile. Now, men generally have more definition. They generally have more of a bulkier profile. So following the profile of the neck, it's going to be straight down the neck. But when it comes to the trapezius muscle, it's going to have more angles. This is the opposite for the most of women. They have less definition, so they're going to have more slender, more smoother profiles. It's almost going to be a smooth curve from the bottom of the skull to the top of the shoulder. We all have the same muscles. We all have the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoids. But in the men, it's gonna be more bulky and more have more definition. 
generally, most of the time, you can have a buff girl have more definition in the neck than a slim, slender boy. Now, let me take you through a few pics and show you how these muscles that I have chosen, how these muscles are actually seen. We got the first pic right here. There you can already see the sternocleidomastoid and a bit of that second head of the sternocleidomastoid. Now, with the trapezius muscles, it's like I said before, that's not it doesn't really have to show that much definition that simple triangle you have that simple triangle shape that you have can be enough for the trapezius muscles to be shown the definition of the trapezius muscle will only be shown when the character or the person has little to no fat at all which is unnatural or when those little muscles in the neck are really 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 tense really flexed most of the time, it can even just be a slight line coming from that collarbone to show that sternocleidomastoid and two lines coming down from the jaw for that neck, for that cylindric shape. Now, this is men with definition. Women will almost have no definition at all. Most of the time, you just need to have that cylindric shape and that triangular shape for the traps. I don't, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, you don't need to show that definition. The definition only is only showed when you have that turn, you know, that three quarter turn or that complete uh, 90 degree turn in the neck like with this baddie right here imagine she's only doing a three quarter turn and you can already see that mad definition of that sternocleidomastoid now when you're drawing this when you're tracing it or drawing this specific picture just keep in mind where those muscles are connecting and then keep in mind the definition you know even the slightest turn is enough to show the connections the tendons of the sternocleidomastoid when a guy is doing this three quarter turn yes more of these muscles will pop out because they have more more definition that you can see that primary sternocleidomastoid with a secondary one sticking out there by the collarbone and in the corner right there you can see those little smaller muscles that i was talking about that show themselves when they're really 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 flexed there you even have a bump for the adam's apple not all men will have the same amount of definition it's just that men generally have more definition but any small three-quarter turn is enough to show the connections of that uh, sternocleidomastoid that is sitting right in front of the collarbone for anyone, man or woman. It just differs uh, definition wise. If the woman is only showing definition in the tendons of the sternocleidomastoid, the man doing the same turn is also going to show that uh, tendons of the sternocleidomastoid and slight detail by the back of the uh, by the back of the skull behind the ear. Now jumping to that side view where the character is not turning at all in a man, you're not going to see that much definition. Yeah. Most of the time, sometimes you, you don't even need to show definition. If you want, you can just show a line coming down from the bottom of the skull for that sternocleidomastoid. Now in a female, it's completely empty. It's, most of the time, it's completely empty. You can have some lines here and there. Now, there are a few things I want you guys to keep in mind when drawing the definition of these muscles, of the neck muscles. Now, the first thing is, yeah, males will have more definition than females, but there will be sometimes, there will be sometimes where both men and female won't have any neck definition. Now, the other thing is the neck has a lot of muscles, obviously, but like the other body parts that we're going to analyze in the future, it's important to understand that when one side is contracting, the other side is relaxing. Any type of work when, you're, when the muscle is contracting or relaxing, that muscle is going to be seen depending on how much fat the character is. Yeah, the, the character has. Yeah. So when the neck is relaxed, when the muscles are relaxed, they're not going to have definition at all and the more work they're doing the more definition that they're going to have now the last thing is the level of definition which muscle is going to have definition before the other the first muscle that's going to have more definition is that sternocleidomastoid the primary head of the sternocleidomastoid especially that especially those tendons by the collarbone sitting right in front of the collarbone now the second one is the second head of the sternocleidomastoid now the third one which hardly occurs but will occur is the trapezius muscle that's basically the order of the amount of definition that will be shown now what i need you to do is pause the video and go grab yourself a pencil and paper we're gonna draw some of these next all right so for the first one we simply have the head shape first you first want to start with that cylindric shape 
for the neck and then with that triangle for the trapezius muscles then because the character is not really having that much neck movement he's merely just looking forward you can just have a few lines for those sternocleidomastoid connections to that part in front of the collarbone right there at the bottom of the triangle when the person you're drawing is merely looking forward you can have little to no definition in the neck just that just a few lines to show the sternocleidomastoid now here we have a picture of the last style bender you can see he's having a slight three quarter uh, turn with his neck so you're going to see more definition now again starting with that head have that cylindric shape for the neck and that triangular shape for the trapezius muscles because it's a three quarter ish uh, turn one side of that triangle is going to be seen and the other side isn't now that he is in that three quarter turn more definition is going to be shown especially on the sternocleidomastoid you don't really need that turn to show the definition in the connections by the tendons of the sternocleidomastoid like we did in the last picture you saw it when he was merely looking forward but now that he is in that three quarter turn you are going to see a lot of the detail by the tendons of the sternocleidomastoid and a little more definition closer to the back of the neck of that sternocleidomastoid the more the character turns the more definition you're going to see in the rest of the muscles all right this person is having a, again a three quarter turn but now we're looking at that person at a side view so there's some definition that is there but we're not going to see it because we're looking at this character at a side view so starting off with the head you have a curved cylindric shape for the neck and that triangle once again for the trapezius muscles now because this is a side view you're only you're obviously going to be looking at the triangle from the side and now that we're drawing a female keep in mind that majority of them don't have that much neck definition if you want your female to have neck definition go ahead just keep in mind that majority of them don't have that much neck definition although she is having that three-quarter turn so keep in mind that they don't have that much definition and she's still having the three-quarter turn so you're gonna have just a few lines to show the definition for that she's trying to climb on my story now the last pick we have is another female having a three-quarter turn and we're now looking at them so again we're starting over the head we have the cylindric shape for the neck and that triangular shape for the trapezius muscles because we're looking at the character three-quarter view and she's having the three-quarter turn one side of the triangle is going to be seen and the other trying and the other side of the triangle is not, not going to be seen now this turn is not that dramatic of a turn but there still is going to be the definition especially by the tendons of the sternocleidomastoid so you want to have a few lines there what i also like to do is to have a line coming from the jaw for that sternocleidomastoid this is done in a lot of anime styles this is something that i have observed in a lot of anime styles now with this newly acquired knowledge go on the internet go on pinterest wherever collect all of these pictures and do the same as you just did right now redraw these necks keeping in mind the different things that you have learned today where the stenocleidomastoid comes from and connects to how much definition you need to show in this view and that view go crazy and with that we have come to the end of the video if you enjoyed the video please make sure to drop that like and if you have not while you're down there make sure to hit the subscribe button so you become part of the double empire you see being a part of the double empire we do many things in this channel we do art tutorials like the one you just watched right now we do many art challenges like my outfit redraws this is an art channel with good vibes so don't be shy make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be part of what's happening here so you can be part of the double empire i don't only operate on youtube make sure to check me out on my ig and my twitter the links are waiting for you down in the description yeah god bless and until next time double m out